How are we getting on, folks? Um, look at it. Clan Melder today, it was decent enough. I, I, I'm fairly happy with it. Like, overall, um, things went our way in some races and they just, we were very unlucky in, in, in other races. Um, overall, we, we got, we got great, great races for our money. We, we, we were bang on the money for 90% of the races that were there, thereabouts. Um, obviously, who you cotton at, at, was the only non runner of the day. I put it up there last night. It was, it was a two horse race, in my opinion, between himself and Marcock. I, as soon as the non runner came in, I went for Marcock. So hopefully, most of you did the very same as well. Um, if you did, though, we, we got the, the next best winning very, very comfortably. Cala de Volpe was, was ran a very, very decent race. It drifted out actually to 28 to 1 at one stage of the day. So hopefully, a few of you got on board around that time as well. Uh, obviously, got backed into 16 to 1 then again. And it, it ran a very, very good race and jumped very, very professionally. I, I've a definitely added in for the tracker for the next day. I think if it, if it improves any more than what it did there now today, it's, it's, it's on a win and run and it should be definitely. Definitely win the next time out. Um, obviously look at the nap. Uh, I think that was more hard overhead. I, I, looking back in it now, I should have known that American Image wouldn't last too long on the ground. But look at Aileen gave gave it a great ride for, I suppose for a horse that like realistically every jump that they met like the met had spot on and everything else like that. It, it it ran a decent race, but it just got caught out in the ground. Um, our patron tip of the day, Marshall. Oh my God, how in the name of God, I that that horse got bet. I do not know. I, I, Danny Mullins must have uh, must have hit a couple of rockets in his tack there today. But uh, look at fair play to fair, fair play to Danny. Got up the double. Um, one of the one of the more nicest nicer lads in racing anyway, and he's he's definitely a gent. Um, I I don't mind losing to the likes of him. Like it's. He he's a great he's a great jockey on board of any horse and um it was just unfortunate for us that the line just just came that little bit further away. Um Joe's got nabbed really and, and Saint Benedict as well was in my opinion very disappointing. Um look at the the bad jump two out, it it it, it sealed the deal. It was it, it was just it, it, these things happen really. Like it, it sometimes it goes our way, sometimes it doesn't, but we got a good start of the day, and unfortunately, look at we just couldn't finish it out how we started. But look at Fairy House tomorrow. There's some nice prices in here. There's some pretty sharp prices. It looks like it's going to be a, a fairly decent day for favoured backers. Um, now I found a couple of, I found two in particular that are are very decent value and very good value as well. Um, that should be well capable of running a very decent race. Um, but I suppose to save me rambling on and and to to get to the good thing, what what you're looking for now, uh, we'll crack on with it. The first race off the one thirty five, the favorite here, Fredo McGuinness, definitely looks interesting. I, I I wouldn't put it past it winning, um, but I just think there's more capabilities capabilities in horses underneath him in the market and for me hallowed star at five to one is definitely going to be the next best of the day we're starting off with the next best we're hoping for a very nice winner uh for jody mcgarvey and shark handling uh like i said five to one i think this horse is a, has an outstanding chance it was very well supported the last day in down royal um and with all due respect it ran a very very decent race i think it was behind decimation that particular day um i think the gap was nine lengths not necessarily great but not bad either at the same time lariat is more of a flat horse um and i just think actually no it's not lariat he's meeting lariat's in the next race because i have lariat written down here um but i'm trying to think who the favorite is now i can't can't think off the top of my head who the favorite is but something about him just didn't take to me anyway i just i didn't like him i said i'd avoid him and i'd go for something a little bit better value in the market hello star second last time out was well supported that particular day and um 
it should take all the beating. And I, I would be confident in saying that Jody McGarvey, he should be able to get a, a very decent run out of him. Um, should be well capable of, of being produced late on. And it should be definitely one of the more likelier winners. And I think 5-1, to one, you're not going to find much better value there now tomorrow um, for a horse that's definitely one of the more likelier winners. 2 of 5 then is going to be, um, like I said already with Lariat, I'm going to stick with him. I, I just realised there now, looking at that particular race, there's more pointers in the field and there's more young, inexperienced horses coming in here. Like I said already with, with Lariat, he's more of a flat horse, but should this lad be able to jump and should, I suppose, things be able to go his way, I definitely think that he 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 has the capabilities to just have the the power in his flat game just to be able to kick clear in the run in, and providing he's able to jump a hurdle, he should be very hard to beat. Uh, Daryl O'Keefe is on board. Um, a very very talented jockey. I I'm I'm nearly blue in the face from saying it. This lad is going to be a multiple time champion jockey in years to come. Uh, he's only twenty years of age, twenty or twenty one, twenty I think he is. Um. He's got the world on his shoulders. Like he's, like, he is just so talented, and he's he's got so much experience and so much talent for such a young lad. Um, he's definitely got years and years of success in him, and uh, Tamara looks like he's going to, like I said, providing that Lariat's going to be able to jump a hurdle tomorrow. It should be very hard to beat, and I I just think. 11 to 8 at the at the present moment is a fairly nice price. I think it should be going off in this particular field even one of your odds on. 1 to 2. I, I can't see it drifting in the market. If it does, I wouldn't necessarily be concerned, but I'd be sort of raising, me, raising my eyebrow a little bit. Um, I think it's definitely the, the class act of the field and it should be very hard to beat. Uh, 240 then is going to be my patron pick today, so I'm not going to be covering that. But uh, the 315 is going to be Chow Bella again at 11 to 8 uh, for Elizabeth Doyle and Sean Flanagan. Now, this one here, similar enough to Lariat, um, it's meeting an awful lot of pointers and it's meeting an awful lot of horses in here that are probably going to be. <sighs> what's the best way to describe it? They'd be immature and they'd be sort of fairly wired and. They'd be highly strung more so than anything else. And it, it just... The experience of Chow Bella over hurdles. I know she hasn't necessarily gone on to win any any particular races. But she ran some very credible races in, in better company. And uh, like I said, the drop in class... I suppose... Being the class act of the field as well... it, it, it It's probably going to stand to her. And Elizabeth Dial, She's well capable of getting the horse ready uh, for a for a race like this and Sean Flanagan is having the time of his life at present moment in the saddle and he's having winner after winner um, definitely a man in great great form and hopefully he'll be able to get I suppose the job done now tomorrow again next race then the 350 and I'm going to be I'm actually a nap in the next best uh, double here for McGarvey and, and Shark um, or McGarvey and Shark is a go Gulos, uh, at eleven to eight. Now this one here, like I said, it, it was a very decent third in Goran Park, um, last time out. It was his first run over hurdles. Uh, ran a very very credible race that particular day. Um, was it a, was a bumper now or hurdles? It could have been a bumper as well. Now come to think of it, it probably was a bumper. Um, but. Like I said, third that particular time, that was in the time when Shark was really firing in all cylinders. Um, he's he's put up some very decent performances. Shark has this season, and uh, it should be good. I I I think this um this current cross for for Gordon Elliott, it's a little bit short for me. I I think I think this um this Gulos has more potential to to grow and. Potential to be a, be a better horse than uh, than Corin Cross, and um, it should be very very hard to beat in the finish here. Providing it look, providing it improves and providing it goes, 
I suppose, one step better than what already has done. It should be very, very hard to beat here. 420 then is going to be... It's going to be a no bet race, really. Uh, Old Town Guard at four to seven for Gordon Elliott and Jack Kennedy. Realistically, like I suppose Lariat and uh, Chow Bella, it's meeting the field of pointers. Should be miles, miles too good for these on on ratings and overall capabilities. Capabilities alone, um, uh, providing I suppose it it gets a clear round of jump and it should be very hard to beat. And uh, you should be expecting to see this horse pull. I suppose well clear in the finish. Um definitely not a, a bet for um I suppose definitely not not one to be betting on singly, but I suppose look at if you want to double it up or treble it up, whatever you want to do. I, I think it's fairly safe and it should be it, it should definitely be be well way too good for these. Uh finally then the four fifty I am gonna be going with uh the Midlachlan set up here with, with uh, Dylan Maxwell on board. Um, one for Pascal here at 9-1 to one each way. Definitely looks to be the one to be on. Um, it was third last time out in fairly decent company. Albeit, look, at it was something like 12 or 16 lengths, whatever it was uh, behind. It, was still, it still ran on for third. It's not necessarily the greatest of field. Um, an awful lot of these are coming in here that haven't been in great form and I suppose different niggling things about them but uh, look at the fact that it was third last time out if it improves anymore should definitely be well capable of getting a place in here Um, I think Bet365 are paying a quarter of the odds Uh, so in my opinion this one here should be very very hard to beat Um, well it it I, I won't say it very hard to beat, but it it should be it should be one of the more likelier ones to get in the top three or top four, whatever I think I think it's paying four places. I'm not hundred percent sure. But uh nine to one each way at a quarter of the odds. Look at it it is finished third last time out. It, improvement should be I suppose good enough to, to get it into the top two or top three. Uh, whether it goes and wins the race or not, I don't know. I don't think it's good enough. But uh, in terms of value for money, I think nine to one each way is definitely a, a good bet to go. But look, at I'm going to leave it there. Please make sure to keep liking, sharing, and subscribing for those who want to sign up to Patreon. Um, it's ten euro a month. But as well as that, we do monthly giveaways. Um, I'm 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 nearly blue in the face from saying it now. But like January, we give away a a share in a horse for a year. Uh, February we gave away the um the hacked up racing gifts, um the mug and the and the Cheltenham Festival book, and uh this month here uh it's definitely one of the best prizes that we we have on offer. Basically, what we're doing is we're going to be doing a tipping competition. Um, now what that entails of is if you sign up, you're automatically entered into it, but the pot is two hundred quid. Uh, that's one thing for sure. No matter who, how many we get. How many we, we um, I suppose if we don't meet the target or whatever like that, we're still giving away two hundred quid, uh, for in prizes. So, look at for a tenor entry, I think two hundred quid is definitely great value. Uh, our overall profit loss on on the tip and service is ninety, ninety three or ninety four points in profit overall. So realistically if you're if you're back in a tenner a pint we do uh, we do one pint stake so if you're back in a tenner a pint you're uh you're you're getting an overall profit return of something like 940 or 950 euro whatever it is um since we started up in december so the value is there to be seen um i leave a link in the description below uh, as well as that say if you're watching on facebook or twitter or whatever i leave a link in the description um or underneath the video to it as well um but that's basically it folks i uh, hope i suppose you're all enjoying the videos i know i got a few messages there today of thanks i want to say a massive thanks to, to those um as well as that look at i this is what i'm here for i'm trying to get ye as much winners as as I possibly can coming up to Cheltenham and hopefully look at you're all enjoying the service and everything else like that uh, I'll be doing a few Cheltenham videos coming up now in the next couple of days as well just I suppose it's, it's trying to get find time to do them as well it, it's it's a little bit tricky with all the racing going on at the moment but I'll definitely stick it in now over the next couple of days and hopefully we'll be 
will be ready to rock then. Look at thanks very much. Please make sure to keep liking, sharing, and subscribing. And if you're having a bet tomorrow, the very best of luck.